Hi students, my name is Chirayu Bhatt and I am going to explain the fundamentals of marketing and economics to you and uh, as far as economics is concerned I am going to explain some of the micro and macro economics concepts to you and uh, those of you who are uh, a vivid and frequent reader of newspapers and magazines such as Times and uh, Mm, India Today and Economic Times and stuff like that. Those of you will be familiar with a with a concept called GDP. Uh, GDP basically means gross domestic product. But many of you might be wondering what GDP really is, what GDP means. So for those of you who have heard the uh, word GDP but do not really know what GDP is, I would like to explain this concept to you about what GDP really is. So what is GDP? GDP is gross domestic product and it is the total of goods and services produced in an economy over a period of time. So in simpler words, it is the aggregate of goods and services being produced in an economy over a period of time. So with the calculation of GDP, we can figure out whether an economy is doing good or bad. So whenever you hear that the economy grew by uh, 6%, it means that the GDP has increased by 6%. That means GDP is the best indicator as of now that tells us the story of economy, whether an economy is doing good or bad. So how do we really calculate GDP? There is a very uh, famous formula for calculating GDP and it says Y is equal to C plus I plus E plus G. Y represents GDP and the formula itself represents C for consumer expenditure. Whenever we go to buy something in the market, we are issued with a receipt. That receipt is calculated in consumer expenditure. If we have bought a goods uh, or services worth $200, that $200 will be calculated in the consumer expenditure. Then comes I. I stands for industry investment. Whatever investment has taken place in an economy will be recorded in here and that will be calculated uh, with the term I. Then comes E. Now E is a little bit tricky concept. You will have to pay attention uh, to understand E. E really stands for export minus import. So whatever the final figure you get once you uh, do export minus import that final figure you have to write it here. It may be plus, it may be minus, depending upon whether export is greater or import is greater. Then comes G and G stands for government expenditure. Government spends certain amount of money in an economy on various developmental projects. That particular amount is recorded here in G, government expenditure. So again, when you calculate Y is equal to, when you want to calculate GDP, this is the formula Y is equal to C plus I plus E plus G. So here is a sweet example, quick example for you to figure out what GDP is and how it works. So we have a hypothetical situation here, number of people in an economy 150 and C consumer expenditure is $90,000 investment, industry investment obviously is $120,000 and E is equal to export 40,000 and import 60,000. So keep, keep these figures in your mind and try to put that here. Export is 40,000 and import is 60,000. So in this scenario, in this case, import is greater. So we will have minus 20,000 here and government expenditure is 150,000. So when we combine all these figures and put it in the equation, it comes as 90,000 plus 120,000 minus 20,000 yeah remember minus 20,000 plus 150,000 so we will get GDP figure of $340,000 now this is the GDP of the economy that we have numbers uh, here now what is per capita GDP per capita GDP is something that we get once we divide the GDP figure with the number of people residing in a country or living in an economy and then we will get the per capita GDP. So when we divide 340,000 by 150, which is the number living in the economy, which is the number of the population, then we will get 
a figure of 2266.67 this is the per capita gdp that means each person living in uh, this economy is earning an average uh, 2266.67 now this is the reason uh, why big economies and giant economies like india and china whose gdp is very high but because there are a lot of number of people living in those economy the population is very high you always get a very less uh, per capita gdp this is the prime reason for that because remember you have to divide gdp with the number of people living in the in the nation in the country then you will get the per capita gdp so the larger the number of people living in an economy the less uh, the per capita G gdp figure is going to be now there are some economists who have uh, who have shown us the limitations of this method as well gdp method now there are so many limitations of the gdp method but we will highlight only the main limitations of the gdp method and that is gdp does not take into consideration the black market economy what do we mean by that see this equation here y is equal to c plus i plus e plus g now that only records those transactions which are going through the legal system which are going through the uh, official system what about those transactions which are taking place uh, outside the economy you know uh, there may be some transactions which cannot be recorded i mean what happens if uh, if uh, someone has bought uh, 200 crore rupees or 200 uh, 200 thousand dollars guns or ammunition or equipment what happens then so all those transactions which are not recorded officially they will not be calculated in the in the in the framework here which is y is equal to c plus i plus a plus g so that becomes the limitation of the gdp system here then some of the economists of australia they recommend that gdp ignores the work done by uh, the housewives see housewives all over the world they they do tremendous work they they look after the babies they they iron the iron the clothes they prepare food they look after the entire house what about what about the amount what about their work so gdp does not uh, take into consideration the hard work uh, and the work done by the housewives so that is one of the shortcomings of the gdp method as well then comes the third very crucial point rehabilitation work after natural calamities and war times now what do we mean by that see uh, we had an earthquake in New Zealand in Christchurch a couple of years back and there was an earthquake in Nepal recently as well. There was an earthquake in Gujarat as well uh, back in 2001. So once any natural calamities takes place in an economy, after that the government starts the re rehabilitation work. Because of that rehabilitation work, the government expenditure is going to be high. Now that particular expenditure that does not really represent a constructive uh, expenditure that is the government expenditure is showing high because the government is planning to re planning to rebuild the stuff which is already destroyed you know so in that scenario although your gdp will be high because the government expenditure is showing high figures the gdp figures will be high but that does not represent a true picture it will be it will be not a very good picture and very true picture i would say so this is one of the one of the shortcomings of the gdp method and then comes it only measures standard of living and not quality of life in economics there are two different phenomena: standard of living and quality of life standard of living has something to do with earnings jobs yeah and quality of life has something to do with your 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 stress-free life your life expectancy your pollution free life you know crime free life so GDP only represents standard of living. It only tells you how the citizens of the economy are doing as far as uh, jobs are concerned, as far as money is concerned. It does not show us the larger picture where you have to take into consideration the uh, quality of life. So this is 